Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 49. This training module, we're going to do a spark tuning demonstration using our test vehicle, which is a Honda Civic Si with a K24 engine swap. We're going to be going through the process from building our spark timing table out from scratch, learning how we can dial in both part throttle and wide open throttle on our mainline chassis dyno. We're going to learn how we can integrate a knock sensor into our knock control to guide us along the way doing our wide open throttle tuning. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with dialing in our spark timing on a live demonstration vehicle here for this tutorial. We're gonna go through the process from dialing in part throttle spark timing into full throttle spark timing and using our knock control to guide us along the way. We have a lot of things to cover, so let's jump in and talk about what the vehicle we're working with here is going to be and then modifying our table and going through the entire process. So the vehicle we're dealing with here is a Honda Civic Si. It's an in-house test vehicle that we have. It's swapped with a K24 engine and the engine is rebuilt with 12 and a half to one compression pistons. The engine will be a little bit more knock sensitive compared to a normal lower compression or stock compression K20 or K24 engine. So what we're finding in this tutorial may not exactly apply to your engine you're working with, but the concept, the idea of what we're trying to accomplish will apply across any engine you're trying to tune. So the very first thing I'm going to do is start off with a plug and play file that Haltech supplies for the Honda K-Series. I have a Honda K-Series plug and play harness and Elite 2500 here for the vehicle. So that's the file I have loaded. I've already dialed in my fueling data. So my airflow and fuel model are 100% on the car. I'm purely looking at just spark timing. And what we'd like to normally do is have a relatively low spark timing values in our spark timing table, dial in our VE table 100%, get the airflow fuel model worked out, then jump back into spark timing, and then start to go after dialing in the spark timing. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. Let's jump in here. I'm going to go ahead and modify this table very first thing because I have a naturally aspirated engine. We can see the engine, the, the table here is going out to 30 pounds of boost. That's not going to be applicable for my application. So what I'm going to do is go to the breakpoints for the table. I'm going to chop away all of the positive manifold pressure breakpoints. So we're going to go to delete values and click OK. Now, if you're turbocharged, supercharged, obviously you would want to leave those breakpoints in there. But for this tutorial, because I'm naturally aspirated, I'm going to keep things simple and get rid of those. The other thing that I want to do is get rid of my spark timing as I'm going up here to very high engine speeds. I'm not going to spin the engine to over 8500 on this particular K24 engine, so I want to make sure I don't have breakpoints populated higher than I don't need to actually have at the table. So 9,000, 9,500, 10,000 RPM. Let's simplify the table a little bit in RPM and let's chop away those breakpoints. So we'll highlight here and we'll delete and click OK. So now I have a spark timing table that's more representative of the load my engine's going to see as well as the RPM range I'm going to be sweeping in my engine. The next thing I'm going to do here is just grab the entire table and zero out all of my values. Now, normally you would not need to do this, but just for demonstration purposes and for this tutorial, I am zeroing out the table. I want to talk about how we can build out this table and then essentially starting from scratch so you can see that process from start to finish although you don't need to go this drastic or this extreme with zeroing out the table. So right now, if I try to start up the engine, the engine would be very sluggish and non-responsive with zero degree, very, zero degree spark, timing spark timing command in my table. What I'm going to do here is start to build out my table from my zero values so you can, again, kind of see how this table is going to shape up and form. Now, what I'm going to do at idle conditions, this would be, if we're looking for roughly uh, 1,000 RPM to zero, and from, let's say, full vacuum to something like negative 17 here. I'm going to put a value of 15 degrees. That's a pretty reasonable spark timing value to have for most any engine. And then we'll find here, as I'm getting up to 0 PSI, I'll keep my spark timing between 0 to 1,000 at 0 degrees. But what I'm going to do here is highlight between, and I'm going to do a H, which is interpolation, horizontally. And I'm going to start to blend down that spark timing as we get up to 0. Now, the next step here is to consider in part throttle where we want to have our spark timing at. This engine is a little bit higher compression, but I'd expect to be around 30 degrees to 40 degrees of spark timing from roughly negative 17 uh, manifold pressure and below. So what I'll do here, just to keep things simple and conservative so we can go and move into doing our uh, tuning and doing some pulls and some driving here on the dynos to demonstrate of some of this, I'm going to go here from, let's say, 8,000 RPM and I'm gonna go here to 1500 RPM, and I'm gonna go all the way to negative 17 and set all the values here to 20 degrees. Now 20 degrees is still pretty conservative in terms of spark timing for part throttle cruise. This is where we'll be in our part throttle cruise, but at least gives me a reasonable starting point where I don't get excessive exhaust gas temperature by having spark timing too low. It allows me to then evaluate bumping the spark timing in from this point. 
Now the next thing I'm gonna do here is move into full throttle and set up some of my spark timing values for full throttle conditions. I'm gonna put my values at 10 degrees spark timing to begin on this naturally aspirated engine. That's extremely conservative. I'm probably 10 to 15 degrees under where I should be at for spark timing. I'm doing this in a very specific reason. Number one, I wanna have very low spark timing here. So let's go from 2000 and above, I'll set this to 10 degrees. I wanna go and have really low spark timing so that I can dial my fuel and airflow model in first I've already done that ahead of time, but assuming that I'm starting off with my process here and building out my table, 10 degrees ensures I'll have no knock or pre-ignition under full throttle. I can focus on doing my pulls without worrying about damaging the engine. The second effect or second part of this, why we want to have low spark timing commanded here, it allows us to evaluate our knock DB table right here. We can go and establish the output noise the threshold table values that are going to be appropriate for our engine. So when we have low spark timing. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.